baby, your baby, you're not hurt, babe. You're just, you're not punched, babe. I didn't hurt you, babe. Not that audio. And not the audio that um, that also she said, you, you can't, you can't leave. I'm going to die. I'm going to die that she's having like um, an attack um, of sorts. She, she can't let him physically let him leave. Not the audio either or the audio that she's more in control. The audio that she's making fun of him hardcore and calling him a fat ass and old. Uh, she says, suck my dick, blah, 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 suck my dick. And it starts with that. Not him saying it. She's saying that. And then she starts laughing and having that Machiavellic, crazy, freaking manic laugh. And then uh, he says, Aquaman, which is the only thing that he says to be kind of like wicked. But it's not in his nature to do that. You can tell, but he just had to throw one in there. So they just play that audio. Like I played before a bunch of times. That is not. It was new in the court. Like it was new for the, new for the jury, right? But not for us. We heard it before. But um, I mean, we heard it before. I heard it before. It's on YouTube everywhere. But the but it, but the court is the first time they hear it. And they, but I mean, I was so fucking happy they played that because it speaks for itself. And I don't know if I'm gonna play it again. It's it's so upsetting though. And then the next clip is thirty six thirty five through forty three zero eight. What's this one? So tired at 5 a.m. Whispering, hold on. That's not it. That's not it. Roll in Aquaman, didn't he? No, Miss Vasquez, I got myself okay. that role by auditioning. <laughs> That has to happen. That happened after the audio I'm talking about. They had not talk about, she's saying, suck my dick and whatever. Okay, so this is next. After that audio, a very upsetting audio that I'm not going to play because I feel sick every time I do. Um, Camille says to Amber, so you got, so Johnny got to the role in Aquaman, right? Um, and... Um, Amber is going to respond. Let's see what she said because I didn't see it yet. But I am sure they just. I don't know what can you say. Somebody said that to you. Anyway, let's see. Mr. Duff says, "Quote: Your jealousy is so tragic." Role in Aquaman, didn't he? No, Miss Vasquez. I got myself that role by auditioning. Oh. Mr. Duff says, "Quote: Your jealousy is so tragic." I heard him say that, yes. You were the jealous one in this relationship, weren't you, Miss Heard? I think he was indicating I was jealous of his career. And now you've twisted it to say it was Mr. Depp. That's the jealous one. Johnny's always been very jealous when I worked, when I did anything. Friends. Yes. Well done. He say you twisted. Sir, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 120. That was good. Your jealousy is so tragic. Aquaman, a Aquaman. Of messages, uh, between you and Mr. Depp. Oh, this I never heard this before. I saw this That's before. Correct. It's I think it's text or it's a diary. It's text. Um, I'm going to move to admit. Yes, admit, admit, Camille. Um, Mr. Depp's messages have been redacted. All right. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right. One twenty-eight evidence for publish. I love they're adding stuff more that we don't have. Let's see. It starts with a text message from you to Mr. Depp on September 26, 2015, right? That is correct. You write, Monster is back. This is him. Did I read that right? That is correct. And then in the next message, you write, quote, Ran away, first sign of trouble. This is not the man you promised you would be. Did I read that correctly? Oh, that sounds familiar. That is correct. Then in the next one down, you write, Promise, swore to me you would be. That is right? correct. The non-monster. I don't remember that one. Promise. I heard you're talking about Mr. Dapp running away from you at the first sign of trouble, aren't you? you no, know, I'm um, I'm recognizing the clues at this point when he would run away at the first sign of trouble. Often that was a clue for me to know that he was back using again and that we were about to enter the next 
nurse, the nurse Amber. She's so arrogant. It's not, it's not into you to get somebody sober. Man who beat me up. The running away was just attached to that. It was a sign, a signal to me as a clue, as somebody trying to put together clues. No, no. See how ignorant and arrogant she is. She's like the running away was the monster. No, he was not running away to get high with Marilyn Manson upstairs or downstairs in the basement with Manson and all those people. He was running away to run away. She flipped it in a way that, like, she thinks the jury, I mean, we, we're not going to buy it, but she thinks people over there are going to buy this. That, no, when she was, when he was running away, he was running away to, to go get high. It was the monster. The monster was, the monster was telling him to run away. That's what he was, that's what I got to stop him. This is now is she's contradicting everything that she's been saying for the last I don't know five years that the monster was drugs and stuff and now the monster is something else plus drugs and they're running away is not because he's a coward but now they're running, they're running away is so he can score and get high um, that is I didn't get it like that before and until now i always thought that running away was to run away from from the fucking conflict because otherwise he will snap and he's doing what any person with two brain cells will do and try to stay calm and remove yourself but she's taking it everything as a why does she get to have so much control i mean this guy is 55 years old or he was 55 back then can you imagine being 55 uh, I'm not 55, and I'm not that young either. I imagine my age having a dude telling me what to do, telling me what to eat, what to drink. I don't do drugs or drink, but let's see I do or whatever. Tell me not to eat cookies. Tell me to go in the sun because I'm too pale. Tell tell me, taking me to take allergy pills, whatever it happens to be. If a guy that age, that young comes to my life and thinks that he has it all figured out and is going to try to control me, like, of course, he's going to, of course, John is going to act like that. He probably didn't act like that with the other women because they, they didn't try to do that. If he has a, a bit of rage and all that, they call it, because of when you drink, you probably have that. It's not that he puts it on, on women. I think it's, I think it's on him. He hurts himself. Um, whatever whatever medium you want to say it, I think he does. And I'm not saying that with shame, but I think he does hurt himself. Um, that's the only abuse he commits. Like, really, when he's the monster. Um, all the people say that he can hold his liquor. So if you can say that, then when he's in opiates and in drunk, worse and worst case scenario is that he will just nod. Somebody who's on the nod... It cannot grab you and strangle you and and, and, and and sexually assault you. I don't want it. I am not going to play all that. Because that happened two days ago and I really, I actually made a decision that I was not going to play that. I was not going to give that any energy or time. Because um, I can listen to it. Um, I listen to it over and over by myself. It doesn't trigger me. But I don't know if somebody might. And also I don't want to give it time. But the other stuff, yes. But the sexual assault, no. No. In these messages, Ms. Hurt, it sounds like there isn't Mr. Depp doing drugs, is it? It was always um, the man who did drugs and beat me up. Yes, that's always been a monster. That's not what you're saying in these messages. That is exactly what I'm saying in the messages. You don't describe Mr. Depp being violent, do you? I do not describe that in this text message, no. So it's a cowardly monster this time. No. Okay. And going down the page, you write a long series of text messages to Mr. Depp. Okay. I don't get a response. Is that correct? I never. That is correct. Never heard this you before. You write, come grown, face the shit, and we can do anything. You go on a little later to say, please come home. Let's apologize to each together. And continuing on page 77, you write, not go to bed mad. And then you say, sound okay? Sound like the priority in the long run? Come home. Don't be the monster. Be the man. Please. Please call me. 
please. Continuing on page 78. You write, I don't want the monster. I need my man. Oh, man. I need to talk to you. So many Please, bleeding. Johnny. Don't force me to be something else to you. Oh. This is Look what you made me do. <laughs> that is like something that your mom or your dad will tell you when you were a kid. Look what you made me do. I was being nice. I was being, I was going to be nice to you this weekend. But you, you got all your room fucked up or you got bad grades. I never did, but whatever. Look what you made me do. It's, it's, a, it's a thing that, that we told when we're children. Look what you made me do. Now you're not going to have ice cream. She's saying that to him in a way. She didn't say that. Look what you made me do. But she's saying it in like in a different way. Uh, well, do this or I don't want this to happen. And you know what's going to happen if you don't do this. Um, <laughs> it's beyond the attachment issues. It's beyond the borderline personality disorder that has that is very that it hurts because they need so much. It really hurts these people when they are being abandoned and left alone. I mean, I will just probably cry for like an hour or so, whatever. I'd get it over in a couple of days. They, 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 um, people have that. And not in birth, they people have that. It's, it's, it's hell when they're being left. It, 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 it's hell. It's hell. And I know that because my ex had that. It's hell. And you don't understand because you're like, well, if I stay, um, it's more trouble. I got to leave. But the person is telling you, I, you can't leave. I'm going to die. I'm going to kill myself if you leave. You can't leave. And that's what both of us have. But you can do that and not be an ember. You can do that and you can work on it and do your therapy and couples therapy and your own therapy three times a week. And you can actually learn and rewire to not do that to people. You may still feel like shit when you're left alone, but you can learn not to do that to people. She doesn't fucking care. Uh, but that is this um, gigantic, shiny, um, the, the highest symptom of borderline is that. Well, just don't, just don't, go, don't, just don't. You can't go, you just can't go. And then, they, and then because she also is kind of psycho, well, if you go and then when you come back, something might happen. That's um, that's a game that they do. These people do not borderline, but that not the last part, but the the histrionic and the narcissistic and the and the I don't know if it's it's not even narcissistic. It's just manipulation, just for the sake of it, because she's a fucking brat. And uh, there's a lot of people that have borderline personality disorder and they're not embers. Let's get that straight. Okay. Um, that same situation, I had the situation happening to me when somebody going like, please, please don't go. Okay. You just, you can go. You can, if you go, I die. And I'll be like, no, if I go, so it's going to be okay. You're going to be sad, but I'll text you when I get to the, to the bus stop. No, I will die if you go. And for those people, it really, it, it took me years to kind of, for, I forgave this person for all the, the horrible things that he did. I still forgave him because they're ill. They're sick. It's a sickness. But just like any other sickness, you can sit around and get your fingers infected and not do nothing about it or go to the doctor. So um, she's ill. <laughs> she's a very sick person, but she doesn't do nothing about that. So she's not going to get better. She's not going to be happy. Uh, it is so, uh, okay. I just wanted to clarify that that's what they do. That the messages don't, it's not like she wants him here so she can she can be entertained or some, it's a money thing. No, it's an attention thing. It's not even attention. It's you, I, I don't have no person. I don't know nobody. I have no personality. I put mine on my, you are my personality. So if you leave, I'm nothing. That's when the audio that he says to her, you don't exist, is the one that breaks her the most because they already, already kind of have that, they're hollow, they're empty, they're, I'm nothing. 
That's why they mimic the person they're with. That's why they start wearing what the person wears. That's what they do because they they don't have a personality. It's really, really interesting. I'm going to do a whole video. Um, I have a different take on her. Not a different take, but I don't think... I think that she needs help. I don't, I don't want her to kick the bucket. I mean, I want her to pay for what she did, whatever that means. Money, community service, I don't know public apology and I want her to get help um I I um I can't um actually when I when I listened to the audio the first time I I, I cry it made me really sad because I heard my ex say the same thing now the audio when she's making fun of him not that that is not borderline that's just her a drunk Okay, so I'm not talking about the audio. I'm talking about the audio that she's like, don't leave, you leave, you leave, I'm going to die. Don't leave. And then she said, you're killing me. You're killing me. And it's not touching me, killing me in a way of, it's really deep. It's, you really, um, these people really feel like that in the moment. That plus the alcohol, the, the dope, and the fact that she has the other disorder, and she has anxiety, all of the things. It's not a good combo. And when you have any of those things and on the top of it, you think doing mushrooms is a good idea. People have this thing on mat with mushrooms and with weed and with ecstasy that they're they're you know they're the one the they're the one thing that is gonna open your mind and it's gonna it's gonna be good for you. Yes, <laughs> but when you're not neurotypical. I'm neurotypical, you know, I mean, we all, we all cooks, right? We all got our problems, but when you're not neurotypical, when you have, when you differently, like they are, those things you can take, man, it can have an effect that it's not going to have on me. So even on me, that's why I don't smoke weed. That's what I never done LSD and I don't like mushrooms because I fucking never had a good trip. So, and it's, I don't have borderline, but I'm just saying people that have anxiety and depression and ADD, which is what I have, and some, some, you know, not a typical, typical brain, but a little bit, um, mood disorder, not a personality disorder, um, you're not going to see faces and hear things and hear voices. That doesn't happen to me, but that might happen to Amber because when you have what she has, experimenting with shit on top of it that it doesn't do the chemistry of the brain that I don't know exactly how it works because I don't know how the brain works on on that sense um but it's not a good idea and I can't believe none of them none of none of his girlfriends and his her girlfriends and the, and the sister nobody said to her hey like you're depressed, you're you're really you have this anger issue because they they talk about it. They have to talk about it. Maybe like slow down, like with the drinking. Like there's a lot of things like you know eating. Um, it's ridiculous, but sometimes if you eat, you know, you drink too much coffee and then you have anxiety, that you can be bad for you. Like just sometimes you gotta stop little by little. But of course, who's gonna the fuck tell her what to do? And she's gonna listen to you? No. But if I know her, if I knew her, or uh, people that I knew that had this, I'll, they know that they cannot mix uh, uh, speed with, with downers and hallucinogenics and like ma mushrooms. Like the, fa the fact that she thinks mushrooms are okay, uh, which they, they are, uh, for some people, they can be very positive. Um, for somebody like her, with such a paranoia and such a control freakness issue, I don't think any of those drugs are good for her, um, especially not cocaine. But she said that she hasn't done cocaine in a while. I believe that. I believe that. But the amount of red wine that she drinks that they say, bodyguard, banking, Johnny, even she admitted on the stand today that she likes red wine, um, alcohol you know, mixed with meds, mixed with the, the panic attack that you already were having an hour ago. Um, it's something that, you know, why do you think that when you get those, you know, those pills, whatever you're taking, it says in there, don't consume if you're consuming alcohol. 
It's not because they don't want you to get drunk. It's because even half a glass of um, um, wine, whiskey, anything, even a couple, maybe probably a couple of beers, it'd be okay. But you're not supposed to make so that. You're not supposed to take ecstasy, um, you know, uh, mushrooms, ecstasy, go up in the desert. It's a four hour uh, ride. You're driving with your pregnant sister on the back while you are on mushrooms or getting to that peak. Maybe you're not high yet, but you're getting to it. Not only is it responsible, but it shows you that she doesn't really have a lot of, a lot of, um, um, I don't know how to explain it. Because a borderline person, I mean, they have they have vanity, but they're not. They don't have a lot of self esteem. Because, like I said, they, they don't exist. They think they don't exist. They feel that they don't exist. That's why Amber had to be all the time with people. She has to have this support, and she talks about it in court today. She talked about it as well. Um, Johnny needed support for his drinking. Um, I needed support too. And she says it like that, like, who am I support? Ayo was my support, and Raquel, and Whitney, and Amanda, and Brittany, and all these people. Um, why you need support? Just like, you're a grown-ass woman. You just can't handle, you just can't fucking handle life. I mean, I'm saying, your support can be your therapist. That's it. You need to have a group of friends that you just, like, drag them with you every time some drama is going on. That's not a support um, network, as they call it in recovery. That is not a support network. That's something else. That's minions. <laughs> That's slaves. Okay, because a support network, you know, is going to be there for you when something happens. And it's going to be there to help you. But it doesn't stay with you. It's a support network. Let's say I have a friend that is on my support network, right? And I'm freaking out for whatever reason. She comes over, takes care of me, whatever that means, not really, but makes me think that I can take it on myself because that's the trick right there. Um, helps me a little bit. And when I'm okay, she leaves. That's support. Not staying and staying and staying. And now we're going to go to Coachella. And now we're going to go that. And now we're going to all live together in the same penthouse. And we're going to do a bunch of mushrooms. That is just a weird friendships. It's almost like she was driving all those friendships. You know, it's not really, it's like leeches. Uh, it's not support. Support is what I just say. That is support. And for everybody, for everybody, it's different. Support for some people is like, man, I'm so depressed. Let, let, come over, we'll play some video games. I don't play video games, but I can see how how that might just be what a person needs to do to stop thinking of whatever they're thinking. So support can be anything, but the support needs to take care of you in that moment, and then the support needs to leave so you can take care of yourself. There has to be some boundaries. <laughs> um, she doesn't know anything about it. Um, and I think that's why she doesn't keep her friends, and that's why... Johnny keeps friends and workers and bodyguards and assistants and just friends in general for like 20, 30 years because um, they are a good support network and he treats them nicely and they have boundaries. I think that with Amber, whatever she was going through, then all her friends have to go through. So I'm trying to say. I'm spending so much time talking about this whole disorder thing. Because I think that's really... I mean, the court, I love what's happening in court. I think it's super fucking interesting. But I like talking about uh, what she has. Because I feel like after she was diagnosed in court, um, a lot of people, you know, it, it was this thing like, she's crazy, she's nuts. And without knowing the, the scope of it. And really... Like, listen, <laughs> if you think your life is bad because it's too hot, it's too cold, you got no money for gas, whatever it is, <laughs> think if you were Amber Heard. Do that exercise. Your life is good. <laughs> You're not Amber Heard. 
And Johnny says, for Johnny, it's a nightmare. Even if he's smiling and he's having all, having all this out is, is a nightmare, but he's, he's having, he's making peace with it. He's going through the journey and making peace with it, but he still doesn't like it. Who likes it? But you can be Amber. When I think about it like that, I'm like, oh, my life is great. I'm not Amber Heard. <laughs> I can be Amber. And I will just, if I put myself, yeah, I do this as an exercise, but um, when I was watching her first one, the first day, where she got that looking weird looking suit on and the hair, and I was watching the first one, um, um, in a, I, I, I not cry, sobbing, but I got all watery, and I know it's bullshit. And I know she's full of shit, but I'm able <laughs> to feel that if I put myself in her shoes, I want to vomit. Like I will hate myself. I will. I don't want to say the word. But I will probably want to off myself. And I don't know. Because if she, if he wins this thing, I don't know what's going to happen. Like what is she going to turn into? Maybe, maybe it's for the best. But I'm, I don't know. I have a feeling that I'm usually not wrong about these things. That, um, because I know people have what she has. And it doesn't really end up. Too, too well I'm getting sad so um, I try to be logical and I try to be empathetic um, I still think she's a criminal that's the thing you can be you can have borderline and not be a criminal at all straight up you can have bipolar and not be a criminal so she still has to pay for what she's done to him which is all that stuff, cut his finger, smash him with a, a, a cigarette, I think he's, you know, all the domestic violence, plus the defamation, plus, you know, the smirk campaign and drag his name to the mud. She has to pay for that because that's crime and that's fucked up. It's crime. It's a civil case, not a crime case, but which is Johnny's fault for not calling the cops. But whatever, that's why I've been saying that from the beginning. You didn't call the cops. If you should call the cops, I get why he didn't call the cops. But if he called the cops on her, this would be a, a criminal case right now. Anyway, so she had to pay for what she did. She had to public apology. I don't know whatever the fuck you name it, charity. But there has to be some consequences for her. But also, she, she gotta get she, she gotta get help. She gotta get help because she otherwise she can die. Um, people that have this and they. Um, oh, they can't be alone you know that's why she was never alone she always had like her minions and then Johnny and that's probably why she became an actress she can't be alone what happened when she's alone when, when all this is over and she burned all the bridges because we don't know if any of her friends are friends anymore of her. We've seen people. I haven't seen the, the, the list of witnesses. And Ayo is there. Raquel is there. They actually they testified today. Ayo testified. Ayo did. And Raquel did. And I haven't watched it yet. I suck. And it's 6 a.m. And I got to go to sleep. But she burned so many bridges that... What else is gonna happen from now? If you win the case or if you lose it, like the the public opinion and the the embarrassment and the, which is the worst thing that can happen for people that have what she has. They care a lot about what other people think because deep down, the, this is it's funny about. I mean, I need to make a whole video not right now, but if people want to, about borderline, and about histrionic, completely. One can go with the other one, but actually, they are really different. What she does in court is histrionic, right there. It's oh my god, when she what she, what she was doing close doors to Johnny was pretty much high sy symptoms on borderline. Oh my god, on, on in glory, 
with shining freaking stars. But she's not going to do that in court. In court, that's why she wasn't able to cry. And people were like, she's not able to cry because she's not. Because she's not feeling it. She's feeling the drama that she has to create. She doesn't feel like crying. When I watch her testimony, I feel like crying. Um, she's doing her testimony. She's not crying. What the fuck? You know, I don't like her. I fucking, I, want, I don't like her. What? How I feel. Uh, when she was giving the testimony of the bottle and all that. How I feel something. And she doesn't. Uh, the simple answer for that is because the histrionic personality disorder is about acting. So in that moment, she was acting. The whole like, <laughs> and the whole thing she was doing and this and this when she was doing that. And that was acting. That was acting. Like it's, it's really not that hard. And it's not that hard to cry either, but it seems like for her, maybe nerves, maybe she's not able to cry at all. Maybe it's a physical freaking problem. I don't know. But she wasn't sad because she was being histrionic. She wasn't sad like in those audios when she says, you're killing me, don't go. You can't You can't go. If you go, I'm going to die. That's that the audio that I listened to. That, that's like from 2019 when they met together again that they shouldn't but they did anyway and that's bad on both of them um because they're straight order for three years and then you go and meet up in san francisco in a hotel but she kind of like trapped she, she set him up she set him up but he opened the door i don't know but you're not supposed to meet with people after you get a strain order on them you're supposed to meet up and have coffee or wine or whatever but they did they meet up and that's when um, he did the whole cut, cut, cut me thing. The audio comes from that too, from San Francisco. Um, even their friend and guardian angel friend, all that, Carino. Um, Carino. It's the last name, is the Italian last name, so I remember it. That's why I remember it. Um, it gave him the idea that, hey, I just booked you the hotel. Okay, you can go there and meet with her last time. And they did. And that was a total trap. Um, because I think she was going to... Not off him. Like, I don't think that she wanted to off him. But 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 she was going to hurt him a lot even more. And um, it was a bad idea that they got together in San Francisco. Could have... With that knife around. I don't know. But uh, what I'm saying is like, that right there is... Her last, and that's where her, her illness just kicks in. You can't leave. She already had the $7 million. She already pocketed that. Because you know that Elon Musk and other people, and, and, and she put a little bit of it, like a tip. Um, they already are kind of covering her her trouble with the, with the charity. And she's already, she doesn't care about the charity anyway. So it wasn't about the money at all. She already had the money from him. It was about winning, winning him. She had to. She can't be alone. So how dare you? How dare you? You can't leave. And it's sad. It's very. It, it, um, I know it's, it sounds a little bit manipulative, but in a way, like think about it. Think about if you are like that, um, how you will feel right now. It's awful. I want to vomit when I think about it but not because it's awful to live like that to live like he lived and to live the way she lives to to be like that and come on and you made your own bed you made your own bed and now you gotta lay on it so that's when I don't think the 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 illness and the mental illness it, that's when it has to go down the window. It has to, and she has to pay for what she did. And um, I think it's great that she got diagnosed in court. I think I hope that she gets help. I think it's great that people are talking about it. I don't make fun of her that much. I make fun of her like with other things, but I don't make fun of her, her brain or what she has. I try to be empathetic. I try to. I'm not the person, I'm not the person that sits here and talks shit about her outfit. That's silly. 
Um, I'm not. I'm not do that. I'm not doing that. Cause that makes no difference. If her outfit was awesome and she was gorgeous, it will make a difference. No, we'll still be talking shit because we still don't like her because we we are hurt by what she did to him. So it doesn't matter how she looked. It doesn't matter. She can. It doesn't matter. That's why I don't even. Do. I can make one video once in a while talking about how stupid her, you know, suit and her hair look like. But what it really matters to me is is kind of going to um, the the meat and potatoes of the whole problem. And like I said, she's mentally ill, but also she has a criminal mind. For example, Evan Roger Wood, Marilyn Manson's um, little bleach, right? Um, I don't think she has a criminal mind. I think she's just dumb. <laughs> I think she's she's a little girl. I think she's a little brat, Evan. Evan, you're Evan Rachel. Rachel. You're a brat. I feel like she's a brat, but I feel like Ilma Gore, which is the one that's helping her out, uh, Ilma has a criminal mind. You see the difference? Ilma is a con artist. Ilma is somebody who's been conning people since she was, I don't know, maybe a little, a little kid, a kid, I don't know. But Evan, Evan is just an insecure little brat. So the difference between those, those uh, there's a lot of difference between Eva and Rachel Wood and Amber. There is, there's so many. I know people, um, people love to just simplify everything on YouTube. Like, they're just talking the same. No, man. No, they're so different. They they're come from like, th their childhood is so different. Like their traumas are different if they have any. If they have any. The, the, the whole, oh, pff, it's different, completely different. How they are as women, completely different. The only thing they have in common is that whole like activism and you know the 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 we're gonna change the world and we're in the Me Too and all that. That's the one thing they have in common, and be pathological liars, I guess that too. But um, as women, they're like completely they're, they're just different. And they don't have the same thing in the head. Ember is way more. Um, sneaky and uh, i gotta say smart <laughs> amber's uh, she's smarter than evan that's why i think manson is not gonna have manson is not gonna have all these problems that johnny had johnny's taking him like what two three cases 12 depositions a case in uk a case here to bring her down and just make her pay for what she did to him i think with manson it's gonna be like all right, that makes no sense. There's no proof. There's no proof. There's no proof. You send this stupid. You hacking his computer. You go to jail or not? Probably not jail, but it's no proof. He did this. He did that. No, he didn't. Bye. Um, I don't think if Manson goes to court with Evan, which eventually they have to, because when you when you file, eventually you gotta go. You can change your mind and be like, "Oh, I, I'm scared. I don't, I don't want to do it." And then, even if though, even in the court, hates that. The courts hate that because it's a waste of time for the court. So even if you change your mind or you're scared, too bad, too sad. You still have to do it, or you have to go and explain why you're not doing it. So I think they're gonna go to court sooner or later. It can be maybe 2023, 20, and I'm gonna be there. I'm going. I'm going. I'm not going to camp and that all that freaking thing that people are doing. I'm not talking about about them. I mean, God bless them, but I don't have I don't have the time of this time. You know? I'm too old for that. And I'm not going to camp for like 24 hours outside. But I am going to go in the courtroom. So I feel it's very important to watch that. Not as a fan or whatever, but as somebody that knows a lot about the stuff that he's I don't know what he's going through. I don't know him personally, but a lot of the stuff that he's going through legally and emotionally, I can, I can, I can relate in many levels. So I would love to go. Anyway, I think a lot, I think some of us are going to be like, Ooh, let's go field trip. Not for me because I'm like 40 minutes away, but uh, I could never come to Virginia. I would have to just like, somebody would have to drive me. Um, and somebody with a lot of, patience because I'm awful in a car. Um, I'm a 
I'll tell you what to do and where to go and I'll ask you to stop so I can go pee. I'm awful. <laughs> so um, I thought about Virginia, but then I thought I, I can't stop work for five weeks. And even if I can't go for like a week, it will be a lot because where I'm going to stay. I don't know anybody in Virginia. All right. Anyway, but I'm going to go to Madison. Um, but again, I do think the Embers, Ember has more of um, a criminal mind in a, her upbringing like she always says i come from nothing and that does something to people and evan is a brat evan had money when evan was five years old evan doesn't come from nothing so i think that's really really um like that makes a person i mean you can be super poor and be amazing, amazing, and grow up and just be fucking amazing and thrive and everything. But you can have a lot of money and be an idiot, okay? I know that. It happens. But when you were a kid, um, if you develop this this sense of ambition that I think um, Amber has, that you have this whole thing, like you have to go to California and you have to be somebody and you have the, the blonde girl with the ambition, that that cliche, but it's actually a real thing. And you can you will do anything for fame and all that. That's Amber. That's not Evan Roger Wood. Evan Roger Wood is a little wildflower that you can step on <laughs> on the way to Sunset Boulevard. No, I'm just saying, like, like that's kind of what he did. Um and he she was 19. I guess just the people need to stop that bullshit. But um, I'm going to, when this thing is over, which is going to be, I'm going to go back to Manson because that was, has been like 90% of the stuff I talk about that I know more about that than about this. But also, I didn't have like seven hours or more, like eight hours because the if I'm counting the lunch, to sit here and watch it today. And I'm not saying that go because I'm, I'm, I'm better than anybody. I'm just in, in half the time. And when I have the time, it's actually Fridays. And Fridays, there's no court. And that sucks because Friday is my day off. It's like Judge Penny, what's up? <laughs> it sucks that they take off the Friday. But anyway, I was going to play more, but I have to go. It is 6.30 and I've been here for more than an hour. But... um. I don't have much, and I know that they did the knife. I know they play the video when she makes fun of him and she's she's acting like a fucking bitch. Um, they play that audio. They play the slap in the cabinets video. Like the jury by now, they watch it a hundred fucking times. Like that's not gonna do nothing. It's like, okay, the guy's doing this to his own kitchen. I don't know. Um, but it was powerful. They play the audio of her saying, you can't leave. I'll die. I die if you leave because, um, that's gonna, that is just gonna be good for his case. Like, see, this is my problem. I can't go anywhere. My problem is not that I punch her. My problem is not, I didn't do none of those things. The problem is I just can't fucking leave the house because she is, I don't want to say it has problems so it's great that they have that audio today and i know it's probably was hard to listen to for johnny and probably for her too um but it has to happen man there was one audio that i listened to that i don't want to play because if i play it i'm gonna get into it and it's gonna make me fucking angry because it's when she brought um the kids She brought the kids, man. She said something of the sorts of, well, Johnny was worried that his kids will see him, will see him drunk because sometimes he will pee himself. Sometimes he will puke. And I don't know if this is true or not. I don't think it is. But allegedly, this is what she said, allegedly. When she brought the kids, um, I, I go like, I turn into the Hulk. Like, seriously, it's not cool. It's not cool anymore. Because you can, you can say the same things. Oh, he sleeps in his own vomit. He's such a monster. Without bringing the kids. She brought the kids to the conversation. And you can see that 
Johnny was like this, like not looking at her because he doesn't look at her once, but like he stopped whatever he's doing and he really was paying attention. And he really was really upset. Like if you do, if you talk about my kids, if you talk about my kids, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. See, that's the thing when you're a mom or a dad, listen, it doesn't matter what you say is true or not. It doesn't matter. You just can't have the name of my kids in your in your mouth. <laughs> That's gonna help probably how Johnny is. If he passed out in front of his kids because he was drunk, maybe, maybe a couple of times, maybe. But that's not the point. The point is she brought it up to hurt him, and it did hurt him. And that is so low. That was so low. So low. I gotta show that tomorrow because that was, that was. That didn't, that made me angry more than sad. Like, I don't know, he's so cool and he's so collected. If I was me, I'll be like, be like, here, here, Ben, here, Camille, here's my drawings, here, you can have my Skittles and my, my cup of coffee, I'm out. And I'll just, that would not be a good idea to go jump her right there, right? But you don't bring my kids, man. You just don't. You can talk about how much of a drug addict I am or much of a slut I am or I'm a cheater or whatever she call him, a um, fat ass and all, you know, um, joke and suck my dick and all those things that she said to him. But do you need to say that he passed, passed that in front of the kids? You don't need to say that. But at the, she she doesn't really have any... She crossed all the boundaries that she, that one more is not going to make any difference. She's going to keep crossing them, crossing them and just, just, just get everybody, just make, if she's miserable, everybody's going to be miserable. That's the thing with Ember. You notice that even when she talk about her friends and when we see her friends later on the, later today, Ayo and Raquel talk about Ember as a, something that they burn, like the bridge burn. Because that's what she does with people. It wasn't just Johnny. And I'm not trying to minimize it. Uh, the worst is, was with Johnny. Um, but she does this. This is something that she does. So I think that I don't think Evan Rocha Wood does. I think in that case, they're actually different too. I don't think Evan burns all the bridges. I think she's more of a little 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 kid even if she's not a little kid but she's a little princess and amber has this thing about being not a victim and being the girl from texas that being you know the one that he she breaks horses and she is so tough that's why she couldn't cry the last couple of days when people on youtube go like why she's not crying why she's not crying why she's not crying why she's not crying that's why she's not crying <laughs> she couldn't she couldn't because the other part of her, that pride, is bigger. I know, it's crazy, because I'll be crying. I'll be crying. I'll, I'll, I'll get sad, listen to it, and I hate her, okay? And I'll, and I'll I get sad when I listen to the, the, to the story. I close my eyes and I think about, it's not her or somebody else. I would be sobbing. She can't cry because she's too proud. And the pride is one of the worst things you can have as a person. And it, and, it, it, and it doesn't come with a mental illness. It doesn't. Just because you have borderline, it doesn't mean that you have that type of pride. No, it doesn't. You can have borderline or bipolar or whatever and not be that proud. There's there's a thing that she... she uh, Johnny talked about this in his audio um, to her screaming at her something that he's so spot on where he said your jealousy is so i know she has nothing to be proud of listen up i'm not did i say she has a lot to be proud of no it doesn't matter for people like that it doesn't matter it's the pride is something that is is in her since probably she was a little kid and this whole thing like i'm tough and i'm this and actually people like that are the weakest People like that have the thinnest skin. And people like me, or like Johnny, uh, I mean, Johnny is way better than me, but I'm saying it, he's way more collected and more calm. But people like Johnny, people like me, people that are shy and introverted and, and we're not out there, you know, we're not out there that much. We have thick skin. 
people that are histrionic and dramatic like her, they think they have thick skin, but they have the, the thinnest skin. And their in their weakness is so, I mean, it's almost like you feel bad. You know, you, if you think about it, it's so, there's no, there's nothing to be proud of, but they still have the pride because it's all they have. They don't have nothing. They don't have a personality. She doesn't have a personality. She doesn't have a personality. So all she has is her name, the way she looks, a couple of friends, a couple of jobs, but she is not, she burned all the bridges and not because we all don't like her because of the whole Johnny thing. She burned the bridges in her personal life too. Like none of the friends are gonna testify our friends there. I mean, none, I don't want to say, I don't, that's, I'm generalizing everything, but maybe like, let's say 50 and 50 of the friends um, that they don't talk to her anymore. And um, that's kind of what her illness does also. She's gonna grab you and tell you you're the best friend that you that she ever had. You like you're a goth. I'm gonna be a goth. <laughs> Do you like blues and jazz? I'm gonna learn blues and jazz. And that's kind of what what they do. These people that have personality disorders, they 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 need they. Okay, think about it like think about it like a vessel, like an empty, like an empty fucking chocolate bunny. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the empty. So they need to push it in there. And sometimes it's good stuff. Sometimes it's bad, like drugs, toxic relationship, uh, alcohol, uh, bad friendships, whatever. Um, they put themselves in very dangerous situations. Sometimes they become sexual addicts, whatever. They're gamble. They have to fill the void. That's what they have, a void. The void is never going to be filled. Like, Ember is never going to fill the void. Uh-uh. If she couldn't feel somebody like Elon Musk, the guy who has like, what? I don't know. I can't even think of in those in those terms. I don't even know what a million dollars is, <laughs> like, let alone a fucking two billion. I don't know. If a guy like that wasn't enough for her, a guy like that. <sighs> think about it. You know, it, it's it's just who else you can who else you want. I mean, you have this, the, one of the biggest um, male actors, the, the, um, legend, legend, is going to go down in history, he's a legend, um, and you got him, and you fucked that up, you fucked that up, and then you go, Franco doesn't exist, Franco's a fucking drug dealer, please, Franco is sleazy, sleazy, ball bastard, but then you got Elon Musk, you fucked that one too. I mean, you know, <laughs> where else you go from there? Maybe it's time to get help. I don't know. But I am not going to sit here and hate um, 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 I'm not going to do the I'm not going to do the easy hate. If I hate, it's going to be refined. <laughs> I'm going to have my reasons to hate. And I don't like what she's doing because she's a criminal. Not because she has borderline. Not because she's blonde. Not because she has plastic surgery. Like everybody's... Because I don't give a fuck. Why people on YouTube are so fucking like... They're like children. Stop talking about like she got surgery or she don't then she couldn't cry because of her wrinkles. I don't care. Like think about like really I do I don't think there's a lot of people um just do just thinking that way. And I'm not better than anybody, okay? I'm worse than a lot of people. But I'm just saying, like, if you have a little bit of empathy and a little bit of a heart and two brain cells. You will see and understand. This is not just Amber Heard. You might be sitting next to somebody that has what she has. Somebody in your family might be just the way she is. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, those things matter to her. A lot. Exactly. Because it's what, because what Johnny said to her and what the doctor was saying to her, that she, you don't exist. You know, remember when Johnny said to her on the audio, you don't exist. That's the worst thing you can say to a person that like her. Because they usually, people that have that illness, they usually feel like they don't exist. 
So, I mean, he didn't know at the moment that what he said was like, because if you don't, if you tell me I don't exist, I'm like, okay. You know, like I'll be sad for like an hour and then I'll just, I mean, I was like, I get over it, but I don't, I, I'm, I, I can be left alone. I love being alone. My God, I can't, I don't exist. Okay, cool. Um, but somebody that has what she has, you don't exist. It's like, so yeah, they're into the themselves so much. And it's all about what they can get. It's all about how they look. It's all about how they connect, what connections they have, what would how can they get more connections? Yeah. And she is in an industry that is really all about that. So it doesn't help her illness and her freaking weird shit that she works in Hollywood. It doesn't help with mental illnesses. It doesn't help a lot. Because Hollywood, all it does is it make those things gigantic and it just, it, it, my God. Because here it's all about who you know, how you know them, what car you drive, where did you go to college? Because it's not just a famous person thing. It's a lot of people, the non-famous people are the same way. They're egotistic and they're vain and all that. So it's not just movie stars but they're the ones that have like the the biggest um job and to be like to look good and, and it was, it's too important for her it's too important and she was really pretty i think so so she fucked it up because of that of that constant more 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 and it's not enough more surgeries are not going to be enough. More money is not going to be enough. Another guy who is even more successful than Elon Musk. I don't know who else is going to get that is more successful than that. But another guy is not going to be enough. Another girl is not going to be enough. And then it doesn't matter how many women um, or men she is with. Um, if she doesn't get help, it's not enough. And also, I think with the drugs, it's weird. I'll, think, I'll make a video about that also this weekend about the drugs and how to me it's very interesting that she's <laughs> she's like the worst sober companion ever she, you know Johnny's an addict period never denied it now we all know she's the worst companion sober companion ever like sober being sober is sober it's not California sober Okay, it's not, well, don't do coke because coke is evil, you know, and don't do the narcotics, the painkillers, there is evil, but here's some ecstasy, this is some mushrooms, you don't do that, you just can't do that, sober to sober, you you know, like, you don't even have to be an addict to to see that, you see it in movies, you see it, you know, in documentaries when people talk about drugs or whatever, you don't do them, or you do them, that's it. And then you can relapse and then you can have your journey. But for her to just like have this guy who is trying to quit, man, and he's trying to quit addictions that he had for 30 years or I don't know. He said that he was taking his mom's pills. And he was really little. This guy has so many addictions and, and he's trying his best and he's trying to detox and got a nurse, um, um, a nurse, a doctor, a, a, a physician, a regular physician that he also has a therapist and also has a nurse and all this network that is going to help him get clean. And then you have your red wine that you're not going to stop drinking because you're Amber and you love your wine. It's like, oh, dude, I supposed to stop doing something for you? No. That's, that's how she thinks. So the whole thing um, in court when she talk about, well, it wasn't so bad when I offered him the mushrooms and the, and the ecstasy because I thought we can do lovey-lovey drugs. They're not. That might be for me if I take them. But for somebody like him and like her, might not be a lovey-lovey drug. It might be a fucking disaster. <laughs> so and it was because she talked in court how of a, much of a disaster it was when they both took drugs together um sober is sober period the whole thing with her on like well it's control it's control it's like okay here here you can do some ecstasy but you cannot do coke now fuck you like if i was him listen lady I'm 55 years old or 60 or whatever. I you're not my mom. Um, you you pretty. 
You just met me. <coughs> what? You're telling me what to put up my nose? Like as much as a person can tell you, I want to help you. There's a very, there's a thin line on I want to help you and I want to control you and I want to tell you don't drink wine because it's bad for you and don't do cocaine. And there's another way to help people that is not like that. She actually, I think she did it. I think, my opinion, that she did it from a place of control and from a place of narcissism and from a place of uh, um, putting him down instead of real help. And that's probably why he didn't get sober. And I'm sorry that I'm going to be so weird and blame her for everything. Because I think, I think she, I think he likes drugs. So what? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. This whole thing with drugs is like, if you don't. All right, I can make another video talking about drugs another day. Because I don't think that um, you either do it or you don't do it. It's not. It's not the way she was she was trying to sell it in the courthouse. Like, oh well, I, I was okay with the e with the e and the and the mushrooms. Why does she keep thinking the mushrooms are okay? Why does she keep thinking that? He was smoking weed and she got problems with the weed, but she doesn't have problems with the mushrooms. They're just exactly. I mean, they're not the same thing. I'm not stupid, but you know, they're not their nature and they're whatever. A lot of people people that I know down here because it's legal. Where I live, um, almost everybody smokes weed. It's not strange at all. So I don't know why they're making a big deal of him smoking weed and drinking. Like the drinking is bad. The drinking is really bad because it's a. Uh, it just makes you do shit that you don't remember the next day. Um, or you're just like Johnny. You drink and you go to sleep. I don't know. I don't drink because I can't drink because I have have problems um with um um not with drugs but um but, or with drinking it's, it's just a problem my problem is it's a compulsion like i can't do because if i do one thing like if, let's say i like bacon on cheeseburgers then i want to eat bacon every single day that's how my head works <laughs> so i don't drink and i don't do drugs because first of all i'm too old for that shit i already done it I already done it. So it's funny for me when she said that because I used to know people like that. It's so Hollywood. Uh, Manson is different because Manson is a musician. And, and rock stars, um, rock stars, rock, rock and roll people, rap, rap, rock, pop, whatever. Musicians are more into the, the coke because they like, have to be up all night and shit. The coke and the alcohol. And then the actors, the young actors are more into ecstasy. And they think it's like, okay. Because it's a drug that make you hug somebody. And I'm saying, anything that alters your brain is going to fuck you up. And it's going to... If you do it in a bad... If you do it with the wrong people, that's like really important. And if you do it in a moment that you're not okay... It's going to have bad effects. And if you do it with somebody who's a narcissist, if you do it with somebody who is a pathological liar, if you do it with somebody who is giving you a knife for your birthday. So I think the only thing that Johnny is guilty of is to be too generous um, and uh, to open up to to her and her friends way too much and to drink with her and do drugs with her. That was not a good choice. But that's it. I mean, that sounds like a lot, but that's it. That's it compared to all the other stuff that she's... Uh, like he said in the... He said two weeks ago, he said to Mr. Rottenborn, he said, the only person I abused that I ever abused was myself. Or is myself. It is a journey. It's a path. It's like she's so ignorant when it comes to um, addiction. Uh, you can tell that she doesn't understand it. Because she just wants, she, when she talks about it, she's like, and I thought, and I thought 2013 was going to be it. No. It's not like that. At all. Because a relapse, if you know a little bit about this, a relapse is part of the journey. It's part of the 
It's not a problem. When you get clean, it's going to take you freaking not days, months, years. So for her to show up in his life and be like, because she seriously show up in his life in 2000, I don't know, 9, 10, whatever, marry him right away, really fast, right? Tell him to stop drinking, to stop doing this. It told him what to do every single day to a guy who is 55 years old. He already has a life. People call him boss for a reason. He has a personality. He has a whole thing built up. And, and fuck, forget about the fame. Think about it if he's just a wealthy guy, but it's not famous. It still will be the same thing. He has a network of people. He has support. He has children. And she just comes you know, <laughs> all young and pretty and jumpy and goes like, oh, we're going to do this and you're going to stop this and now you're going to do this and you're going to do this movies and we're going to go here, we're going to go to the Bahamas and we're going to go to Japan and we're going to go to this and we're going to do this and you're going to stop drugs because I'm telling you and you're going to seek help. It's really hard. Like that is not the way to get through a person. Trust. Because <laughs> I tried it. It's, it's impossible. So when she was mad because he was relapsing, I found that very, very um, disturbing um, because she's on the she's in court thinking that saying I don't think I don't know no I, I'm not, I don't buy it so I hope nobody's really buying it but this whole thing like uh, that she was the nurse. She was giving him the meds, you know, and, and and you have a person who has a problem with wine, a wino, because people, some people drink, some people are winos, wino. Somebody that needs to have wine every single night is a, is a wino. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I know it's not illegal and I know, but it, it, <laughs> you know, you don't need the wine. You want the wine. You know what I mean? I don't need the donuts. I just want the donuts. So the whole thing with people like, I need to drink one daily. No, you don't need it. You just want it. But anyway, so she came into his life and kind of did like an Everett to Wood thing. Everett to Wood did with Manson. These guys, they already have a life. They already have their job, their career, money, network, fans, you know, like us. Like, you know, if you are, if you're, if you're not, um, they already have, <laughs> they already know themselves. And this girl <laughs> just walks into his life marries him really fast they start telling him what to do oh yeah i mean his friends told him that it was gonna be a disaster uh they, they, his friends you know maybe maybe the kids are not gonna say that to him but kids are very 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 intuitive have gigantic intuition so like if my kids see something my son Oh, if somebody messes with me, my son probably will. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say anything. But uh, but um, they will know because it happened in the past. That they, they, won't, they will not tell me to my face, like, oh, like, like, I don't like how this person is, like, that person was rude to you or something like that. Um, but they knew it. And I didn't say nothing. And they didn't see nothing. But they knew it. They, they know somebody was being mean to their mom or to their dad um, in Johnny's case. Kids know. So, like, she, you know, she throw that, those, those kids on the, on the mud today in the stand saying that, well, um, he was getting high in front of Lily Rose, which is the daughter, of course, everybody knows that. And, and, and he was passing out and sometimes peeing himself. My God. My God. And I'm saying that I'm not going to be surprised if she's saying that because Lily Rose doesn't like her. And Lily Rose was out there, I think, last year on her Instagram talking about how uncomfortable she was around Ember uh, and blah, blah, blah. I think it was two years ago. So... Amber goes to court and goes like, oh, yeah, daddy does drugs in front of you. It's just that that was a really, really uh, bitch move. All right, I'm going to go because I'm yapping here for almost two hours. And I guess I'm not sleeping. Maybe I should stay awake and I watch the trial instead. Because it is, it's almost 7 a.m. All right.
thank you for hanging out. And I thought that um, the chat was working, but I wasn't really able to see it. Like I will see the message and then it like disappears. Cause I'm doing this from my phone cause I have my computer to watch and listen and my phone to be on YouTube cause it works better and has better light. And I am super tired. Um, but I'll be back tomorrow. I'm not going to get on here when everybody is on here. I'm not that dumb. Also because I like to watch uh, Umbrella Guy and I like to watch a couple of people. Even after the stream, I like to I like to watch Umbrella Guy because he just he cracks me up. Um, so then I come from work and then I get here at like 1 a.m. my time, Pacific west time so that's what i do i'll be here at 1 a.m um so wednesday night shit it's wednesday morning right now wednesday night i'll be here wednesday night oh my god i made some tea thank you for hanging out i know i was gonna do i was just gonna talk about the court um the cross-examination and i end up talking about things because I have my own thing in my in my brain that does that there's a lot and um there's things that I, I wanted to talk about her mental health and stuff like that and his addiction stuff like that way before the cross examination started and I didn't have time to make videos about that so that's what I'm kind of like so I'm sorry I have to change the title now. I never keep it. I never, I just, um, I'm a Gemini. That's why I got to change the title because I end up talking about whatever, but it's fine. Right. It's all good. Hey, thank you, Camlin. And I don't know who else was there because nobody else said anything, but thank you so much. And I'll be here Wednesday night. After everything is over, after the trial's over, after everybody does their own streams, and after we can all watch um, the big boys and stuff, and get on Instagram and get on TikTok and all that, I don't like TikTok. I don't like what I don't like what TikTok is doing to this this, this case. I'm just I'm like over it. I'm just over it. It's like it's, it was funny for like a little bit. You guys watch um, SNL. Um, I, I don't like it. I haven't liked SNL since like the 2000s, but whatever. Um, Saturday Night Live, New York, right? Comedians. SNL, comedians. SNL made a, uh, a skit making fun of Johnny, making fun of the trial, which is nothing to make fun of. Um, I mean, we're like talking about it on YouTube as we're talking about domestic violence, but like we're, I'm being very careful with the stuff I say and the words I'm using. And I'm, I'm not trying to make fun of neither of them. Um, but at the same time, I'm nobody. But SNL, they know there's millions of people watching their stupid fucking comedy show. Fucking assholes. And they're making fun of fucking, they're making fun of Johnny. And they're like, the, the guy who's like playing Johnny, he has like, you know, he looks all greasy and stuff. And that's not how Johnny looks like. Or maybe that's not the way I see him that he looks like so it was really shitty i mean you can go watch it i don't want to i don't want to give those people any views snl they never get it right they make fun i mean like one thing is making fun of donald trump or stuff like that but when they start making fun of actors like when they make fun of kanye west i thought it was really cruel too because that's another person who has a lot of problems you know and issues mental issues and um there's no and, and those skits are not even fun. It's not even funny. When they make fun of people like that, it's not even funny. Don't make fun of addicts. Don't make fun of mentally ill people. So they make fun of Amber and they make fun of Johnny even more. So fuck them. I gotta go. Good night. Thank you for hanging out. I'm gonna leave this. Yeah. I never really delete them. I'll, I'll leave it there for whenever time. I'll be here Wednesday night, Wednesday late night, Thursday early morning, Wednesday 1 a.m. Uh, Pacific, my time. Bye. Thank you.